Hi, you guys. Awesome. Ginger Cook here on Acrylic Painting Monday. This is one of our premiere shows. Um, this is going to be lots of fun. I'm going to be answering some of the questions you sent in to me the, or earlier in the, in the past few videos. And, uh, and then also, we'll be, uh, John and I will be typing along with you. And uh, keep in mind that my typing skills are not like my painting skills. I can't spell well, and I hit wrong keys. So and you, you know, do everything in caps. And I do everything in and caps. And I'm not yelling at you. And I'm not yelling at you. How's that, right? So that's how we're going to do our premiere. We want to thank our moderators for coming to our premiere, and um, we'll. Uh, we're assuming they're there. We're assuming they're there because um, <laughs> we don't know, but we think they're going to be there. So big shout out and love to them. Uh, tonight we're going to be painting a fall scene. Um, a lot of times we've done landscapes. We haven't really put people in them, but one of the easiest ways to put people in a landscape is paint them from behind. And they can be just about anybody if you just change a few details. So in this case, uh, John and I decided to put ourselves in the picture, but you could put somebody else in. And uh, we're gonna show you how to do that, how to create a vignette um, uh, out of a painting, make a vignette, kind of simplify it. And we're on a nine by 12 canvas. Let me just put you right on down and show you what we're gonna paint. This is gonna be great. Yes and yes. Okay, in fact, that's a question that came in recently, yes and yes. Where did you get that? Where did you come up with that? We scenario? were on a cruise to Cuba, and the um, back entertainment we got go. back when you were allowed to go. And back, you know, and there was an entertainment uh, host on the cruise ship. And every time he, he had a, a Cuban accent, and every time he asked us something, he'd go, yes and yes, yes and yes. And I'm thinking, that's my saying yes and yes, because that shows double enthusiasm. Yes and yes. I mean, yeah, it's okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And then yes. So yes and, and yes. yes and yes. All right. So here we go. This is a, I have t taken a photograph and worked it into a landscape. The people weren't in this particular landscape. I've worked, worked them in <laughs> and I've done a lot on the computer to soften it. So I don't have to figure out too much of what I'm going to be painting. And I know I want to do a little bit of a vignette, so I've got just a beige nine by twelve canvas. So I'm just gonna kind of, kind of do something like, like this with the chalk. If I can, that chalk pencil isn't really doing it for me. Let me find something else that will. Uh, sometimes when your chalk pencils don't work, you can get out the, the the pastel ones. These are the new. These are. Uh, called um new pastels and they, they're you know if you don't need a lot of detail they're pretty nice for that so I, I, you can see i'm just kind of doing a little vignette just kind of cutting out just showing a little bit like that here at the bottom i want a vignette and this can be very pretty so we hope so you know I'm, i i feel it could be all right let me put that back in the drawer now, I want to start with the sky, and we're using the Salvador paints, and I've got this Stay Wet paint thing, and these are Salvador paints. Okay, that's a paint palette. Paint palette. It's not a, a thing. <laughs> a thingy. Jeez. Stay Wet painting. Paint palette, and these are from, like, over a week ago, and they're still wet and nice, all right? So I'm going to start with titanium white and a little bit of this light blue color, all right? And I'm just going to come on up here in the sky, and I want it a little grayer than that. Now, one thing you can do, somebody asked me last week, what can you do if you want to gray something? Now, let's see, I know we're going to want burnt sienna, but you can gray something by adding a little bit of a mother color to it. And um, that would be raw umber. And that's, that's, um, that's sort of a standby that you just should have on hand. Um, and it's a translucent brown. You can very translucent. So if we add a drop of that to this, and very little, it sort of grays the, let's put a little more white with it. It sort of grays the color. See, and let's just put a little bit more in that, like that. There we go. So I want a sort of a grayed uh, a sky. So I don't want the sky to stay too much. And a little bit more of this white paint, a little bit more of that light blue color, a little bit, about 1% raw umber. People say, well, how much raw umber should I put? Well, you know, there's <laughs> enough a, to get the effect you want. Enough to get the effect you want, right? So let's do a little more white with that. No more and no less. And um, 
I'm going to just go ahead. Now, that's a little bit more blue than I want, so take a little bit of raw umber and white and kind of remix on the canvas. I'm going to come up in here like this into my vignette area. And remember, one of the rules is that skies usually are lighter, unless it's a storm or something, as they come down toward the land or the water if you're doing an ocean scene. So we know that that's kind of the kind of the general area that I want, right? And this is my vignette here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I know that um, uh, that if I take blue and I add yellow to it, what do you get? Blue and yellow. Um, I'm going to guess green. Green. So what's your best get? Do you think we ought to dry the, the blue before we start throwing on yellow leaves and stuff? Yes and yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes and yes. So yes I'm going to dry yes. that for a second. And uh, it'll just, just take a second. All right, well, I'll chat while, while we're doing that. Hi, you guys. Did you know that probably the first four hours of my day, four to five hours of my day, are spent at the computer doing personal art coaching to our Academy members? People send me their artwork that they've been working on, either a lesson on YouTube or it might be an Academy lesson or maybe it's a photograph that they have that they're painting a picture for a friend. And they'll send me that and then... We, I will do a video and do personal customized art coaching for that individual, send it back, and we have this dialogue that's fantastic. And it's just like me sitting in your studio talking over your shoulder and saying, this is great, change this. And it really is true when I say a video is worth a thousand words. I think it's a picture is worth a thousand words. So a video must be worth a million. I think that was it. So... One of the many reasons why joining the Academy of Fine Art and Acrylic Painting is of super benefit to you, and I think you should give us a try. Melvin. Are you singing again, baby? I'm telling you, singing artists, we could be stars. Imp we'd be infamous for sure. We would be. <laughs> we'd be infamous. We'd have a whole infamous. new fan base. All right, so remember, we've got a vignette here. And uh, so I'm just going to kind of basically uh, make a few markings of what I want to have happen. And I know that, for instance, right if I take right about there, is, a, is kind of be where my line is. And that's not quite a third. This is a 9 by 12 canvas, right, John? Yes, it is. And so it that was changed. about, um, uh, let me see, glasses. Like I have to put inches. my glasses on so I can even see. You're about what five inches down. About five inches down, right? Four and a half would be dead center. So you're just below center. Just below center on that. Okay. It's good not to have it right in the middle. You can, but better not to. Just in general. Okay, John, general. Thing. And then I know that, for instance, um, here is kind of here, and here is where my path is going, kind of up around this way. Yeah. And this is one of the things you don't have to be exact on. You're just in a different angle on the path. Yeah, don't get just, hung up on it, guys. Yeah, Keep that's that's simple. true. We're just gonna and remember things get more narrow as they go back, right? So we're just saying this goes back here a little bit like that, comes back up here. All right, so all right, so uh in order to do, happily do my vignette here, I want to take that that was a someone said what brush were you using? This is a Bristol on a silver um cat's tongue. And the reason that I, I want some softer looking leaves, and so I want to go ahead and put those on there. Here's a little bit of white and burnt sienna, okay? And it's good to have something to just tap off colors on. Um, sometimes you can just do another piece of canvas, you know, and maybe just tap something off. Make sure that's the color you want, all right? And I know I've got some sort of little leaf coming down here like that, and just kind of put the brush at an angle and got something kind of coming this way. Some soft leaves there in the background and we're not talking too much about them, right? And then you can you can see where that would be. And then this this we want to continue on with this color because I'm going to say that's sort of the color of my background that my vignette here. So I'm going to come in here like that and do that on both sides. Same color, just a little bit of white and burnt sienna. 
There we go. Just a, I want a real soft, out of focus look. Okay, I don't want any hard lines. Like um, everything looks like it's kind of mushed into everything else. Yes. Ooh, technical talk again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We want to mush stuff, right? And uh, there you go. Just kind of flattening out that cat tongue and leaving it uh, uh, in circles. Do you see that? And just barely lifting up and. Let's just keep going with that. I've got a question for you. Sure. What is the difference between a cat tongue and a filbert? You know, John, I don't know. I don't think there is. Um, well, a filbert is this. Here, I'll tell you what the difference is. Here's the filbert, and here's the cat's tongue. And see how the cat's tongue it looks like goes a little to a bit more point? of a tip. Well, it has a tip. Do you have a smaller filbert you can look at? Just for curiosity. Sure. I hate to be such a pain. Sure, here, here's a filbert. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're more rounded. The, the cat's tongue's more of a tippy tongue. It has more of a point. Okay. Okay. I'm glad I asked that question. Well, but could you use a filbert? Sure. Yeah. Didn't have a cat's tongue. That was a good question, John, because I really haven't given it a lot of thought. I, I think uh, Cinnamon introduced me, my daughter Cinnamon introduced me to... Um, oh, I believe that's the art sherpa, isn't it? The art sherpa, uh-huh. And she introduced me to cat's tongues. I don't think I ever tried one before her. So uh, you can see where I'm kind of doing my vignette here now. Take a little of zinc white. That might be good. Oops, a little bit more here. There we go. So we're just going to very gently just sort of fuzz this in here. Now, see that? So we just, I want to, I want the feeling that we're peeking in at like a scene. Like we're almost, this is a quiet moment in the woods and we're sneaking up on John and Ginger and Sneak, who are we sneaking up on? Us. What? Us. That's us. Oh, that's all. You, oh, you're sneaking up on us. We're sneaking up on us, but you could be, you know. I got you. It. We're sneaking up on the couple that's in there. So I, let's take you. a little bit of yellow oxide and a little bit of cad yellow medium. And what do we know for sure? We know that we want some yellow. I'm just going to use this cat's tongue again and put it um, kind colors. of in this way, like that. We'll leave some of that. Um, Showing and then I want a little bit of zinc white with this because I'm going to come up here with the same colors, but using zinc white, I want them a little bit lighter. Let's wipe off some of the excess paint so that I just am dealing with what I've got now. Come up here. I don't want a straight line. No straight lines. Yes, please. No straight lines. Yes and yes. Yes and yes. You have to come back with some blue and fix that. No straight lines. Yes. So. Right now, we're just doing the softer colors. I'm going to take a, a great kind of orange color that um, uh, you can find on uh, the Salvador kits. It's sort of almost a peach. You can get peach with yellow and or red and um, white. You need to make a peach color just by the by. Okay, we're going to just put some of these lighter colors in here. And um, I'm up in the... Give me a pause for a second. I'm up in the art studio again, and now I'm sneezing. I was going to pause it for just a second. Okay. I've got a little bit of burnt umber now and burnt sienna, and I'm going to put those with some darker colors down in here. This is the darkest of my colors. Maybe a little yellow oxide on the brush. I'm going to kind of mix as I go. I'm going to say I want some darker colors in here. A little bit of darker colors over in this area, too. Kind of around here. And um, there's not a lot of this, but there is a little bit of this, kind of the darker colors. And as I kind of fan this out, you'll, you'll see less of that. But there, there we go. Now I'm going to just wipe the brush off, go into my, uh, let's get, I think we got to put some more of our reds out. This is uh, priorly red. There's a good good red, and then let's see. We're just getting our oranges out here. And this is Naples yellow, which hey. is the one I just used. That's the one I just had, this Naples yellow color. Hey, one thing about the Salvador kits, you got colors ready to go. Well, I thought I'd do this because there's so many oranges and reds in this. Instead of mixing them all up, you're ready, sort to, of pretty, ready to play. Ready to play. And, we're keeping this sort of soft and um, 
easy going here. So um, let's take a little bit of this brighter orange color, a tiny bit of burnt sienna, and let's come in here like that. Add something like this, just using the side of this cat's tongue. I'm going to come up here like that and show some oranges up in this area. We want any up in here now. This is where layering comes in. Here's another yellow. I'm going to let's see. I don't like that as much as just a brighter yellow. Here, let's just get out some yellows here. Um, I am using. Now I'm kind of cheating here. I am using cad yellow medium because if you're doing fall, you really want that color. That is your brightest yellow. So you can use the all the others in the Salvador kit if you have it. If you have a cad yellow, I would add that to that uh, because you can see it's a just. You know what I mean? It's just a bit brighter. Okay, like that. And I'm going to just tap some of this in here. You generally, my lighter colors are on top. My darker colors are underneath. Um, here's some of our lighter ones from the Salvador kit. And as we layer these colors, they're going to and break up shapes. That's what you want to do. Lay, layer colors and break up shapes. Okay. Now, if you've been in the brown and it's still wet, you're picking up brown, so wipe your brush off. Okay. Let's take some of this orange color, come over this way. We're going to say there's some nice orange colors this way and a little bit more they're, they're lighter. You Let's see, there, this lighter yellow color is nice, too. That's almost like a sunflower yellow. And I, I'm just kind of next to my path. I want some good orange colors back in here. It, it, I know it looks a little confusing. You're going, boy, it doesn't look like anything. And I know that that's true. I think it looks but, great. But it's it, you've got to get, this is what's called painting loose, where you're really just, Kind of indicating something happened, but you're not sure what. So let's. let's this is bring... one of those lessons that you like to paint when you really don't know what to paint and you just want to play. You just want to play with it a little. You can find another couple. You don't have to do us. You can find another couple on the internet you like and put them in the scene. You put yourself have to be in the us. scene. So um, I can't imagine why you wouldn't want to paint us, but here's a little bit of the. <laughs> um, I don't either. You know, here's a little bit of the kind of the army green in here. We're going to put a little of that color and just tap it. And uh, up in here like that, just kind of light colors like that. And um, you're gonna just suggest that there are some pretty, you know, there's, you know, what, what happens with fall is that everybody doesn't know about it at the same time. Some trees heard about fall sooner than others. Have you noticed that? They just did, right? So here's our vignette again. And I might want to just take some of this over the top of this vignette like that. Just kind of round this off. All right. I'm going to, as I do it, I'm going to just do another layer here on my vignette. Okay. Something like that. Kind of darken this up a little bit. Then I have it drying a little lighter. So we just kind of peeking in the scene. Now, most of this up in here is very light yellow. So let's just put that in there now. That's it lighter yellow from Salvador. It's going over this sort of uh, peach gray color, kind of pink gray, like that. We're going to put that in there and let's let's put some of this color. Now, this is a very translucent yellow, so a color like this is going to require a few coats of paint. It's not, you're not going to be able to do this in all one fell swoop of, um, of paint color. Okay, but you can sort of you can get a general idea of how you want to do it, right? And, uh, you know, I know I want something in here like that. Then let's take a little bit of some of the yellow oxide is a very good color when you're talking about building up yellows. Tap that on. You know, one of, uh, um, one of, one of the comments we got in, in a video recently was one of our students was painting something and her husband walked by and said, remember, it's all about the layers. And she said, I never thought he was paying any attention. And I think that was, I don't you think that's kind of cute? So let's take some green. I want to, and let's put, put some yellow with it. And a little bit of burnt sienna. That's a pretty good olive green, yeah? Let's put a little bit of that color back here. 
too. It's just a tiny bit. It's on the brown side, but there we go. I want a little bit of that darker color. Maybe something up here in the leaves. I'll tap that on. If I paint with that, I have to be careful because if I keep painting with it, um, it will um, just washing. start blending into everything else. Now I had the dark green, so I've got to rinse that off. So any more questions, John? Anybody got any great yeah, questions Yeah, I us? am telling you, I, I do have a question for you. Uh -huh. And I'm going to ask it to you any second now. Okay. Any minute. Well, I remember when reading those. I remember. Hey, 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 hey. Yeah. He's, okay, go this ahead. Is my, this is my show. All right. Yeah, yeah. Good, good. What do you got? Uh, George Reese would like to know, what's it like working with, with your significant other 24-7? Well, that, I think we both could answer that one, don't you think, John? It's miserable. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Should we have coordinated our, our answers? No. Is it is it miserable for you, honey? Oh, no. No, my queen. I live for the day. Each and every day I wake up. Well, that's what I thought. I, I was rather <laughs> surprised at that answer. Cause my opinion of it was that you... You live for the day you could see my smiling face again. I mean, that's what I thought. Right? Well, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, you know, it's very interesting. A lot of people can't do what we do. No, and I'll tell you, I'll tell you what it is. One year back in the in the oh, I think it was back in 20 years ago, maybe. Um, <laughs> but one year. Um, about 20 years ago. Um, I read a book. From by written by John Gray called Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus. Ever read, read that book? That. Never read it. Yeah, I uh, know. Well, it's everybody should read it. If you want a good relationship with somebody, it is the it is a very good book to read. Because even it messed the most the difficult, I've got. even the most difficult, and not that John is, but even the most difficult person uh, to live with, can, their, your experience can be improved if you understand a few simple things. Basically, men are sort of simple. <laughs> okay. Um, th there is a man in the room. Hello. I'm over here. Let me wave. Hello. They've got some really strange ideas about the world. And if you, when you read this book, you're going, oh, my God, you've got to be kidding. Really? That's true, too? Oh, good grief. Well, no wonder. Okay. So basically, all I have to do is this, and there's some sort of peace happening here. Got it. Really, only one of you has to read the book. You can make peace with the other person. Now, this worked uh, very well when I was uh, with with the before I was with John. I was with George, and um, and we were married for twenty four years or something like that. And I, I I was with I was doing I read that book when when I was with the, with George, and it did help. It stopped a lot of fights, okay? It did help and stop a lot of fights, and so there was a little bit more tranquility. I'm not saying it makes everybody compatible and everything's peachy, but it does if you just want less conflict. Um, and it would probably help with male sons, too, because, I mean, because, because women do, and I agree with John Gray, women do think differently. This is dried enough where I can add a little more oil. Well, definitely, the way we process information is totally different. It is. And the things that are, you know, the, the things, and one of the things that I got from that book, and I'll, you know, maybe you would have gotten something else, but one of the things I got from that book was that um, why, why, when men and women ask questions, and I, and I thought that was very important. Um, Women have a tendency, pretty much the thing, is that we like to kvetch a little bit. They even have a word for it in Yiddish called kvetch. Somebody realized that that was the thing, and it's not bitching. Not the same as bitching. Somebody said, well, they just like to bitch. No, no, no. Kvetching is, it's like a cow that chews their cud. Women chew the day that way, and they spit it out, and they roll it over their minds, but they like to hear how it sounds. And it's even better if someone else can sound it with them. So. They'll sit there and say, oh, wow, oh, boy, you never know what the day I had with the doctor. I couldn't believe it. I didn't get a parking space. And, um, oh, my God, the receptionist was so rude. And you go on. You said, then the doctor, oh, my God. 
You know what I mean? He had a cold. He's still sorry. Can you believe it? That kind of thing, right? You, you get the thing? That's kvetching, right? Now, yeah. the handiest person for most females to convetch to is to convetch with is the person that they're living with. Yes? This is sort of a light yellow, kind of white yellow, right? That's the most convenient. That's the most convenient. The problem is men don't kvetch ever. That's not their thing. They don't kvetch. When a man has a question, this was so interesting because I, I got to get into the, the, the accent even. When a man has a question, so interesting. Because he will only ask another, if he has a problem, he will find an expert, someone that knows more about it than them. Maybe it's how to fix the engine on a car, his computer isn't working, something like that. So if he has a problem, he goes to this computer expert and he goes, hey, you know, I don't understand. I can't make Microsoft work or whatever. Nothing's working. And the other guy says, tells him what to do. And then he does it. And then the problem is fixed. Or if the other guy doesn't know, then he finds a new person that might know, and he asks them. But basically, if he asks the question, he has there's some intention to follow through with the answer he's given. So therefore, when you ask a man a question, he's very honored. This is the book now, not me. He's very honored. <laughs> According to the book, he's very honored you asked this question. And now you have, you have deemed him as the expert. So he is going to give you his best advice, right? And so you're convincing along, right? Oh my God, you should have seen the day I had. I just, God, I could hardly find a parking space. Well, I told you to leave earlier, didn't I? You left earlier, you wouldn't have had that problem. I told you to avoid the traffic. You know, women don't want solutions. They want you to say, oh my God, I'm so sorry that happened. You must be exhausted. This is the this is what the other woman would say. No other woman would say to other women, well, I told you to leave early, right? Unless it's your kid or something, you might do that with your kid. But other than that, you don't do it. Don't you think that's interesting, John? I mean, when you think about it. And so um, the the lesson to that is don't convetch, don't, don't, unless you really, because and then the other thing is men get very insulted if you don't follow their great advice. They gave you the advice. And then if you keep convetching about the same thing, about the fourth time they've given you advice, they're very angry about this because they told you what to do. You, obviously, you're not listening and there's a problem because you guys are talking, one person is talking French and the other person is talking Spanish. You guys are not even speaking the same language. One's talking Martian, one's talking Venusian or something. Yeah, does that make sense? So the thing of it is, is that once you understand that that uh, a bitching to the other person is gonna get you nowhere except a fight, no sympathy, you're not gonna get sympathy from that. Unless of course, you might could ask for a little sympathy. I need a little sympathy because this happened to me. You may get it, might not. Couldn't count on it. <laughs> Can't count on it, right? John's just totally quiet over there because he's going, really? Yeah. And then as we're painting this picture, you see how we're getting the... A beautiful fall scene. I mean, you can see how we're getting it in here, right? The, all the little pretty colors that we're just layering them on. So I say I got to put a little bit more yellow oxide out. That would be three, two, three, five, nine. Is your yellow oxide color in Salvador or yellow ochre? Either one. So, so you've got that, right? So then, let's just get a little bit darker in here. So then, the other thing I got from the book, and actually, I went to one of his um, lectures in Houston, John Gray, and um, uh. Uh, it, what, what the other thing he said was that, well, the the one of the reasons is how we process information. If something happened in the house, the when your, your first inclination is if you've been in the house by yourself or you came home and you discovered this thing, the house, you know, you discovered this whatever happened, right? That you feel need, needs the attention. Of the other person, yes, and then uh, so they come home. And they're coming in the door. And you say, oh my "God, you're home! You'll never believe what happened. This disaster, that disaster. So and so got flunked out of school. That he's being suspended. What are we going to do?" You are not allowed, according to men are from Mars, women are from Venus, to mention anything for th for an hour. Because Minimum. for an hour, you need a whole, because men apparently have this really ridiculous thing they like to do called caving. 
<laughs> really, honest to God, that's what he called caving. So it's called wanted, caving. Caving, caving, and the and how and and caving works with us. Let's open up the sky a little bit here now. Come on, you guys. I'm gonna add a little more color to our sky and break up some of this. Yes, see what I'm doing? Breaking it up a little bit. Okay, so it's not all just one shape. Coming down in here, maybe, and let's take a little more white with that. So this is called caving. So basically, what they want to do now, maybe at different times of the day, doesn't have to be what they're not working like. But something like John, you know, has his hour of caving in the morning. He needs to be undisturbed, unless you know the house is on fire, you can disturb him. But but you have to respect this caving business. For the most part, <laughs> women are not cavers. But this is not our thing. We don't cave. Oh, and we my. want to just, you know, we want to just, we, we're we problem solvers. We want stuff fixed right away. We want you to know there's a problem and you've been handling it all by yourself and you want to dump it on this other person <laughs> or at least explain how brilliantly you handled it. As you handle it, you don't even want to dump it on them. They, you need them to know right away. They can't hear anything for an hour. Not during the home. caving process. Not during the caving process. Nothing, no, nothing during the caving process. So. I mean, there was more stuff in the book, but those were the main things. I thought you could pretty much get along with anybody if you understood the rules. And I mean, nobody ever tells you the rules, right? So how would you know? Exactly. So apparently those are the, the rules. Okay, so now you laid out the rules. Let's go back to George's question. Was it like worth working with your significant other 24 seven? Now that we know the rules and I never read the book, yeah, but you know, but I know them, so yeah, I know them. <laughs> I know them. Oh, so you keep me in line if I get if if I don't follow the rules. Well, it's not so much that I don't even have to. I just John. I just um, just one person, like I said, just has to know them, right? One person has to know. Them. Look how I'm doing more colors. Living with John and working with John is marvelous because he's a very easygoing person to get it. Um, he reminds me a lot of my dad, the judge, growing up. The one thing I always admired about my dad was that he never got hysterical about anything. Nothing was ever, he was unflappable. And, you know, you think about that. What did we mean by unflappable? Have you ever seen somebody said you're running around like a chicken with your head, their head cut off? Flap, 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 right? Yeah. That's where the term came from. And you cannot, um, you cannot, uh, discombobulate john he just doesn't get discombobulated i myself <laughs> can get very discombobulated and we're very talking fast. within seconds and with that, we, have, we have a very short fuse so like for instance cinnamon's dad could just come unhinged over the stupidest stuff right so he made it more look but that was not george that was colby cinnamon's dad could come unhinged right and um and I, I wish I'd known about some of this uh, before, because because but anyway, he he would get upset. Now I remember being with my dad uh, when we were all you know as an adult, and he'd come down to San Diego, and we'd gone out in uh, for a, a ride somewhere, and it was in his rental car, and something happened to the car. I don't know, something happened, and um, and he said, "Oh shucks." This car is not right, huh? And that's all. That's all he said, right? <laughs> Colby would have been jumping up and down, screaming, you know, kicking the tires, and you know, you can't do. I, you can't do a lot with that, right? There's certain people that are just sort of lost causes, right? <laughs> but what I so admired about my dad was that he didn't get upset, and John doesn't either. He handles. He handled the problem, and that was it. There was no upset. There was none of this getting upset stuff, yeah? So I'm getting some more brighter colors in here now with the orange. See, so you keep building up the layers of colors? It's all about layers. Okay, so um, anyway, he he didn't get upset, and John doesn't get upset, and so he's really good for handling problems and really, really good at it. I'm laughing so much, I'm getting mascara in my eye. Oh. Oh, I didn't not. It's waterproof, it not getting in the eye. That's good stuff. Well, kind of, whatever. Anyway, um, yeah. So that's um, that would be the one thing I would say about um, uh, it, it makes it very easy to live with a person that doesn't, uh, as my mother would say, that 
fly off the handle. Doesn't ruffle the feathers. Doesn't ruffle the feathers. Exactly so. Your feathers are never ruffled. Just a little bit lighter up in here like that, maybe a touch up I always there. boil it down, does it really matter? Yeah, does it really matter? And if it doesn't matter, it's just... It doesn't. It it's can. all fixable. It doesn't matter. Just go on. And um, it's a challenge. And honestly, I think that some of us are still under this erroneous belief that erroneous meaning, really screwball, false idea, right? Um, that um, well, there's a lot of people under some real erroneous beliefs, but we won't get into that. But <laughs> that being said, some of us still under erroneous beliefs. A awful lot of people that think if you yell at the computer, you can fix it. <laughs> <laughs> if you just say it louder, it will shape up. And John has learned over the years that that is not the case. That all the yelling at the computer will not fix it. He's never had to yell at the computer. And so when it doesn't work, he just Fix it. fixes it, right? That's all there is to it. He just, just fixes it. He just fixes it. Yes? Yes and yes? Okay, so now I'm going to dry this, and um, I put our I put the two figures in, and then I'll finish the rest of it. Okay. Looking good, my queen. We'll be right back. When you're ready to take your art to the next level, we offer personal art coaching at Acrylic Painting with GingerCook.com. This would be your opportunity to really find your artistic voice. Let's take a quick example of one of our students who sent in their Marty the Moose painting for evaluation. Okay, this painting is by Brenda. This is the before image of Marty the Moose. And overall, it's well done. You got great uh, dry brushing in it, a lot of layer, a lot of color. There is one particular item that Ginger really latched onto that really Kind of throws this moose off a little bit. What we have found that if we don't know exactly what we're like a dog or a cat that we're familiar with, it's a little harder to paint. It takes a little bit more of a challenge and that's where personal art coaching comes into play. Let's take a look at what Ginger had to say about it then we'll come back and see what Brenda did to fix up Marty the Moose. Hi Brenda, you know what? I think your moose is adorable. He's so cute, makes me smile. And you did really well with the colors on the animal and everything. So kind of what happened, this is, I had this profound thought, you're gonna love it. This is, I was looking at it and I realized that I had had trouble trying to figure out this silly nose too. And I realized that probably in my whole life, if I've ever seen a moose in a movie, I never saw one up close. It's not like dogs and cats and horses and cows, which we see all the time. So in your mind, you can't even imagine how their nose goes, can you? I mean, even looking at it now, it seems fine. When you look at a, you know, the reference photo, you're going, wow, that's weird. I mean, this is kind of weird, right? Because it just, it just doesn't go a shape that's normal for us. So, um... One of the things that I did which helped me, and I think it would just immensely help you, is here's what I did. I figured out where this antler was and did a line like that from it, right? So if I do a line like that from yours, you can see that you just got too wide on it. That's all. You're, you're just too wide. And that's how I kind of figure out how to paint mine. Um, so what, what do I need? I need it over about this much more here, like this. Whoops. Let's, uh, let's do this. So it was just, it just got a little big here. You got to just shave off about that much. Now, as to your water, don't you, you kind of forgot to put the reflections in, right? So you got to put the legs in and then put the water on top. Make this leg thinner. He's a little wide here. So get, to make that thinner. And then um, you're okay. You're pretty close with the water. Um, I would have some more of the light green grasses growing up here like that in the front. But put the leg in and then put a few of these things over it. That's what you need to do. And this leg is in front of this leg. So bring this down a little bit, this one. Um, Bring this one down a little more. This was a this leg is in front of that other one. Okay, 
So you got to kind of bring it down where it's, it's, um, or shorten this one, I guess, too. And you, you want, you got a little wide here on this leg. All right, so that one's got to be longer. Yes? And then you just need to erase this. That got too big here on you, that's all. Does that make sense? And then, and then this little, little nose looks good, right? And then, uh, see, all, all's good, right? And then you want some lighter yellow. You, you've got to think about this stuff. You want sort of this yellow green next to his neck so his neck shows up. We kind of are playing with the colors here so that stuff shows up, yes and yes. See what I'm talking about? And then you have a little bit of that. And then you have some of this brighter yellow green up in here too. Even brighter. Some stuff going that way. But that's what I would do. And um, uh, and I think you're pretty, I think you're very close on this. Really, honestly, I do. Um, eyes cute, all of it. You know? Um, so that would be my main thing for Marty. Like your shadow. Everything. Good for you. Like it. Okay. You see what Ginger had to say. Uh, suggestions for Brenda to fix up Marty the Moose. Now let's take a look at this is what she come up with. You can see she trimmed down the nose a little bit to get a little bit more in proportion to what the moose would look like. And also trimmed down that back leg quite a bit. The previous one was almost like tree trunk. Pretty big. Did a great job fixing Marty the Moose up. It's worthy of hanging up now. Hang it and frame it, as we say. I hope you understand and can see the value of personal art coaching and would consider joining us at acrylicpaintingwithgingercook.com. Now I've got to find some transfer paper. Ooh. I think I can any? use, I'll probably use red. I think red would show up nicely. Yeah, you have to be putting the people in basically yeah. the whole time. So, Is that where you're going to keep the canvas? I don't know. I'm just seeing right now if the red even works. Yeah, it's going to work. So I'm going to put this up. I know I want my people up a little bit higher than here. So let me tape down where I want my people. I'm using the Sorel trans, uh, transfer paper. It's really nice to have you guys. It just really is an interesting thing to do. And I, again, you could take a picture of your family, just somebody from behind, and put them in, try to get them the same proportions and uh, put them in the picture. And I think you'll be, um, let's see, is that about right? No, let me get this over a little bit here. Okay, right about like that, kind of what lightening up the, lighting up the path here. So that's what, that's what we're gonna do here. So, you know, you generally have to get something down here so that you know, you got your little background, and then you can do all kinds and of stuff. Once you tape that right side, you won't get your red under there. What? You were about to tape the without putting your Sorel under there. No, I, I, I caught myself in time. Good thing, too, huh? <laughs> so, all right, I'm thinking this is it. Let's see if this is going to draw here. Well, kind of. If you go over it really hard, it right. will it's barely... Right. It's all right, it just has to be there. Uh, Carol would like to know, Ginger, who or what influenced your style of art? Uh, Carol, that's a, that's a really good question. Um, the two influences, the main influences are Howard Barons and Kent Wallace are my two main art influences for modern day. And of course, you know, some of our old older guys that have no, are no longer with us, like Van Gogh and Renoir and those guys. But I'd say the current, current, um, and Howard Barons has passed away. Kent Wallace um, is in, um, lives in Utah, and he's really good. So this is not, I guess the red isn't showing up on the red. Well, let me do, let me do as much of this as I can, then I'll change paper. How's that? Change paper, see if you can just draw in what's missing. Yeah. So that's your two 
two main or that's your main two two main modern yeah, guys. Yeah, uh huh. And yeah. then basically any of the old impressionists with the ODGs from yesteryear. Mm-hmm. You can always learn something from the the old guy. Okay, so this didn't show up at all. Let's that was not blue. a good choice. It's not a good choice. Well, let's try blue. Blue sounds hopeful, doesn't it? Let's try it up here again. Let's change color pens because we've already used this color. What other pen color do I have? Pens. Pens. Oh, here, here's a red pen. I can use that. Yeah, that's showing up a little better. Because there was a lot of red in this um, picture. So the red wasn't really a good choice. Kind of getting that person a little better. I could probably fake a lot of this. So the question is, would you be better off maybe putting the people on first? Maybe, because we've got a lot of thick paint and doesn't want to transfer. So that's something you want to consider. Yeah. All right, so right there we need a piece of white. <laughs> we should just get in the uh, Sorel sample pack so you have all the different colors. Yeah, absolutely. It makes it a lot easier. That yeah, works. see where it's showing up where yeah. it didn't before? That was so clever of you, my cleanness. You just got to, when in doubt, get another piece. Something else, right? Yeah. And then I want you for here, right? How about that, right? I think I got it, you guys. Let's see, what's this side? Let's take that white over here. Aha. Uh -huh. You're going, wow, okay. You want to bring the poles down at all, or are you going to? I'll just, I think I can figure out the poles. Okay. I mean, they're right there. Yeah, well, they are. That's White okay. wasn't the choice for that. Let's try blue for the poles. And as long as we're being the last of the big spenders. Did your mother ever say that last time? Like oh, last. yeah, last of the big spenders. We're last of the big spenders. Let's use a ruler for those. Perfect. Okay, so, yes and yes. Huh. It could still have been darker. Okay. I think we got it, friends. All three. And you see how John has nicely written this side up. <laughs> and, uh... The white's one of the hardest ones to tell which is up. The other ones you can pretty much tell. All right, so there we go. There we are. We're on there. We're on it now. Side so, matches, um, kind of see it. Basically, what I need now is um, I need the um, need to blow up my picture here again. Got it on the computer screen so I can really see it. That would be an iPad. Well, an iPad, yeah. Okay. So let's um, let's take a little white here and come up on the head. So what do we know for sure? We know that if you painting somebody, if you paint them from behind, that's effective, right? 
Well, it can be anybody when you do that. Yeah, it can be anybody, and you just make sure that you have the contrast. So if you're painting somebody with black hair, well, then you'd probably want something lighter around it. Yes. Then, you know, so you've got to take that into consideration, too. I believe there's a saying where there's a light, there's a dark. That was one of my sayings, and it's so good you remembered that. Well, that's absolutely you know, I figured true. it's going to be a test later. I yeah, I so be this little yellow oxide here, and we're going to come down here, and um, I'm going to put a little bit of red on the bottom of this pack here like that. And then wipe that off and then bring that up. Just sort of smudge that up. Just bring it up into the here so you can kind of see it. I'm not really outlining as much as I'm smudging. Uh, kind of smudging it and saying there's the uh the pack there. And then we've got uh when it comes up like that. And we've got a dark brown part hmm. uh in here the dark brown part of the pack. And uh, he's wearing a purple vest. A little purple Nothing but here. the vest. Just a little bit of a purple vest here. Where's the purple though? Isn't that purple? That's purple. Okay, he's got a little bit of a purple vest on. He's wearing here too. It shows a little bit here like that. We're not keeping a lot of detail on this, and that's the trick, that's just not do a lot of detail. And we've got um, kind of blue jeans here. So we'll just uh, put those, just the first layer of those on. And um, take a little bit of this. Nikki would like to know, how does the temperature, cool, or warm colors affect a landscape painting, and how advantageous is it? Well, it, it, it's, it, you, Nikki, of course, it affects it, right? Uh, um, and, um, it sets the mood. It sets the mood for the painting, right? And if you had half warm and half cool, it wouldn't balance out very well. Like this particular painting we're working on this evening, this is quite warm. Yeah, you know, with that accent on the cool colors, which is right. The blue. But if you did a 50 50 mix of cool and warm, your viewer would be confused on what you're trying to say. Yes, you'd be sending a mixed message, or you'd be saying describing Michigan weather. I'm going to take a little bit of purple with this blue now and make this side a little darker. This is the darkest side of the pants. Just a little red with that, maybe. Blue might be better. You, know, you as the artist, you want to you know, convey the right message and keep it consistent. You know, my problem with this is I've got... Um, Okay, this would be when having the original photograph of this before I changed the people to white hair would be handy. I'm not Dark sure right you there. gave me that one, my cleanness. I thought I did, but it's in the, you know where it is. Uh, let me go see if I can find it. That would be useful. This pack's coming down here like that. And uh, this one is the brown one here. This is coming like this on this one. Again, we just we're just suggesting the people. It doesn't have to be too perfect, but um, I'm going to say that I did a pretty nice bright orange shirt. I thought that would be a good thing to wear in the woods, so people didn't shoot you, right? Because it's hunting season, they. They do that. Right? Well, I don't know, but I mean, they could do that, right? Absolutely. So, so I'm, I'm wearing a bright orange shirt so that I can be seen. Does that make sense to me? Does that make sense to you? There we go. And this is kind of lighter up here. A little bit of white.
Now, okay, so uh, let's see a little bit of white on the shoes in here, like that. Oh, that was a little smaller. And you're not really seeing his shoes in front because his and then all the uh, leaves. Are all in leaves, right? So again, we're just suggesting this is the next um, color here. I've got I've got some white on top of this backpack right here, and then the rest of it's sort of a gold color. That gets a little bit of corner here like that. There's a little bit of this gold color down here. Basically, what I'm doing now is just painting in um, um, shapes. You know, when in doubt, just paint the shapes. If you're not sure what you're painting. And um, which I'm not at this point. I have any idea what any of this is. I'm just painting the shapes. Like, for instance, this is the back side of the pack, so it has to be darker next to his head, right? That's the back side of it. And um, uh, his, um, and we got that nice peach color for the arms here from the, we're not really seeing the hair like this. This is coming up this way and doing here. I think I'll do that in white because, uh, and then here's his shoulder here. Let's just make all that white. Maybe a little more orange here. And then we'll just do a little peach color at this point for the face. So to kind of put it in. You, on the other on the lady figure, you don't see the face. You don't see that. Here's a little bit coat two, yes, layer. Coat two of the orange for the shirt. And um, see how you're, we're starting to pull the people in a little bit. And the part of this backpack was, it was a two-tone backpack, which was sort of pretty. This had this lighter yellow right here on it. It was part of this backpack like that. And there was a little bit of a dark outline around it. And then it came back up over here over the shoulders, I think, something like that. Um, okay. Now, um, Everything's just sort of rough. This is what I would call a rough sketch in, right? And um, the blocking in. Yeah, we're kind of blocking it in, right? For instance, we know that this arm comes down here like this. Basically, you're saving the image. Yeah, and here's our pole. And the hands coming around here on the pole. Like that. Gripping that pole. And let's see what else. Um, well, we're going to put them. I, I don't think I have really the purple out that I thought I did. Let's see. I don't feel like I have purple out. I'm going to just, maybe it was somewhere else. I just didn't see it. There we go. All right. So I want something a little bit darker here on the pants. Ooh, now you see I didn't rinse the brush. So that's not a good thing. Just wipe that off. Okay. Here's some purple. I need a dark shadow right here on the pants, coming down here on the inside leg like that. You find that picture for me? I have not, my queen. This. Well, you know what? We can always, the nice thing about doing a premiere is we can pause this whole thing and find it. I'm not giving up my ghost, though. Put that leg a little longer. A lot wider, and um, let's do some darks up here like that. Now, one of the things I see in order for my backpack and the head to show up 
So I need it a little bit darker around here in the foliage. So let's make some greens. Kind of. You know, a little bit of, don't need them that. Need more olive greens. A little yellow oxide is always, yellow oxide always has a little red in it. So if you're talking about needing some olive greens around something, see, I have something dark around the face um, in the backpack. It'll it'll um it will allow this to, you allow the figure to see, see the face starts to show up now because of that right and uh, uh, if I have something a little lighter here like right next to here is that something a little lighter right here a little, a little bit more white coming back this way. Then I want something kind of light going around this way, kind of indicating that maybe the path keeps going. Okay. We're still, we're still good, right? And uh, let's do a little bit of white right here. I think it does something like this on the backpack so we can have the that showing up, you know, this, this, wherever there's a light, dark stuff really does work, just works like magic. Uh, just a neat, a really neat effect because now you start to pull out the, the, um, uh, um, the picture when you do that. Let's just lighten this up too. Okay, so far so good. Now at this stage, I if you're happy with what you've got, right? Which I would certainly hope you would be, but if you're not, you know, if you're happy with what you've got, we've got to put some hands on the poles here like that. Let me just say there's a hand right there on that pole. We've kind of some socks here. All right, so if you're happy with what you've got so far, what you want to do is dry it. And when we're drawing it, John's going to look for my actual reference photo for the people before I changed everything. It's on one, two, three, right? Yes. Do you know what category you put it into? I, mean, I have gone through all of them. I cannot find those people anywhere. And I looked on the V one, it's not over there. So I go down to my computer and find it, set it back up. Um, It looks like you've done some organization in here. Wait a minute, I think I just found it. The one with the dog or without the dog? Um, the ones that, that's with the two poles looking at each other. The two poles. There they are. Got them. Jeez, oh, Pete. Well hidden. Hi, you guys. Do you know the number one reason that people are afraid to t learn to paint? It's because there's a universal myth that in order to learn to paint, you must be born with some sort of talent. And if you don't have that, you couldn't possibly learn it. My name is Ginger Cook, and as an art instructor and professional acrylic artist for over 40 years, I can promise you that learning to paint is a skill. Learning to paint is, painting is a language, just like French or English or Italian, and it's absolutely learnable. I have an online art academy of a fine art and acrylic painting, and in that academy, we take new artists, beginning artists, step by step, from never touching a paintbrush to becoming an accomplished artist. And we do that by pu uh, publishing four new videos every month. And also, this is added to our collection of over 400 tutorials already in our ever-expanding library from beginner to advanced acrylic subjects. So, what I would invite you to do is to let me be the key to help you unlock your inner artist, help you find 
the skills needed to become the artist you've always wanted to be because we know that acrylic painting should be easy and fun and affordable. So if you think that's something that would just be the th something you would absolutely love to do, then click on the link. While you're doing that, let me make the people a little bit, and I'll dry it so I can keep going here, right? I just added it to all photos, so it should be over there now. Okay, so we managed to literally dig up the, <laughs> literally. the photo. And um, I'm now going to go ahead and um, start, now that I have my reference a little bit more here, I'm going to come on up here with my, and just keep working on the people a little bit because we can, right? So, um, Yeah, let's see, we want a little bit of a shadow under this arm here. And bring it around, really like that. Just kind of curve this around. This is the, uh, our arm like that. And we've got the, the vest coming out like this. And again, second coat on the vest. Maybe this is the fourth, I don't know, on, the, on this jacket. And uh, okay, so just just want to indicate that there's uh, you know people there, and then we've got the the back the, the this the strap is kind of coming over the shoulder, so we want to hook it there. Maybe do just something right there. That's too much paint on the brush. Did you see that? So I can just erase it. You see that? Just pick it up. It's just a little shadow right there, and maybe kind of right here. I might want this a little darker under the arm. And uh, uh, let's take a little bit of this light green color and come under here and just make this a little skinnier. Okay, so I just don't need that much. Then I'll, I'll put some light on that later. And uh, like I say, I'm gonna work on the pants a little bit. Uh, put out some more blue. And uh, you know we've got the dark blue with a little bit of red in it makes a pretty nice dark blue. And I want to come up here and well, you know just put the hips back on the legs here. And then this is going to be my darkest side. Well, wow. okay. Okay, a little tiny bit of leg here. And the jeans are coming down here and kind of go up, going up at an angle and a wrinkling down here. And uh, it's a little bit darker right here under this arm. And we've got a vest that's doing that, but that's all right. And, uh, The vest, oh, I see it's coming over this way, coming over the top like that of the arm. Okay. So that's it. And all, sometimes you just have to decide what makes sense. And it wasn't making sense before, but it kind of is now. Didn't have okay. quite enough detail. Didn't have quite enough detail. And we had to put a little more in there. Um, And uh, let's see, I want to do, uh, um, you know, in the photo, this was green. And, um, and I think I made it gold, but I'm thinking maybe I'll make this gold, well, maybe gold around here and kind of a light green. I think that greens kind of could be pretty. I kind of might want green here. So let's do this for the backpack. Changing color. That's the beauty of acrylics. 
Yeah, I think I just, you know, looking at that, I think I need that to show up a little more and, uh, you know, have the little dark, you know, to, to, you know, kind of in the shadow on this side. There's the backpack coming up this way. And there we go. So something more like that. And then I'll make that yellow up there and then it'll show up, right? And uh, this is weird. Um, what we're going to just ignore this and just take that out because it's in the picture, but it doesn't it doesn't read well so there you go there's the backpack let's not get too clever on this backpack what do you say that had some sort of special thing you could see through and see something else the guy was carrying it no we don't want that oh that was part of the backpack design yeah it's this weird backpack and it just puts it's not a weird backpack on. apparently you're not a backpacker well you know john i'm not it's just if it looks like something heavy someone else should carry it that's my philosophy <laughs> What do you think? Don't you think that's right? Somebody else should carry. Let's just put that down at an angle, okay? And um, so then if we said that happened there with the backpack, right? Um, then we should do something lighter behind it. Like up in here, like this should be lighter. So then this shows up, right? And I've got it kind of, kind of got to, got to go in and back out too. I didn't really have that either. It's amazing what I lost when I was playing. Well, you know, when you're, I just sort of did the colors on the computer so I could kind of see the colors I wanted to make this, right? Absolutely. And uh, I want something a little lighter right here too. Where that is, right? That's all fun, right? So you can, again, that's the nice thing about acrylics is you can just keep adjusting. So any more questions? Why I'm why I'm well, you're barely going along? Absolutely. Okay, so here's the light here. All right, now two people are asking a similar question. Lisa Bandinsky asked. Bandinsky. Yep. How did you guys meet? And then Ann White is a little bit more wants a little bit more detail. How did you get started together? How were you two connected? And how did it evolve into you both? being there in Houston in your wonderful studio together doing what you do. Inquiring minds want to know. Oh, okay. <laughs> Boy, and and Lisa. So there you go. Well, I guess um, uh, you can say that um, some years ago, in a galaxy I was teaching, far, far away. I was teaching at Jerry's Artorama, uh just um, as a freelancing art teacher there. And uh, let's see, maybe something a little darker right here. That shows up. There you go. And um, uh, uh, I met a, a guy by the name of Mark Kessler who came in. He's a he's an award-winning um, PBS artist from years ago from San Diego. My daughter used to watch him religiously with all her friends. And you Everybody know he's did. gotten older now, but um, <laughs> anyway, he was. Um, and he has, it's been a while since he's been on PBS or anything, but he did have a, um, he, he was teaching, he was making a pretty good living just, teach, you know, teaching the stuff he taught on TV and teaching kids. And he'd have these workshops at Jerry's. And Mark and I, you know, every time he came in, we'd get to be friends, right? And um, uh, uh, we'd, we'd talk, you know, and uh, one day he called, Mark called me up, right? which is kind of neat. He called me up and he said, listen, he said, I've got a, I'm doing an on uh, over the internet show, which I'd always want to do. just didn't have the funds to do it. it required new computers and all kinds of stuff. I, I, I just couldn't, you know, couldn't figure out how I could ever do that, but I thought it was neat. He said, I've got this neat thing. And um, he says, uh, I'd like you to be a part of it. I've had some success with that and I'd really love it if you could be a part of it. Okay. So, I mean, I thought that was kind of neat. And just give John his long hair here. And of course he has his beard. There we go. Maybe you don't have to do much, right? And um, 
And I said, I don't know. Just, I don't know about the computers. I don't know how I could do any of that. And uh, he says, listen, he says, I've got this guy that works for me. And he'll hit John Little and he'll help you. So that's how we got started. And um, what we realized is what I taught and what Mark taught. Mark taught drawing for kids. And I was really teaching adults. And we just didn't have the same audience. He thought it would transfer over to the kids that wanted to learn painting. but. Um, um uh it just didn't it just didn't it just didn't and so um uh we went our separate ways um which was what you do and uh and i had you know mark i said to john i said i want to do this and what would you think about um doing it with me and uh, he was in Michigan at the time. I said, what would you think about doing it with me? And he I talked over with his wife, Karen, and I said, listen, I'll give you half the business. Half of it's yours, and, and this is how many people we need to keep eating, right? <laughs> we can still eat, right? Because John had no retirement, and I didn't have a retirement. And it was a good thing I did, too, because I'm dry brushing on a little bit of light here on the pants. Good thing I did too, because um, uh, Jerry's one day, now this is a true story, and I'm gonna throw them under the bus for this. I had been teaching at Jerry's for about eight years and I was doing two classes a week. And uh, besides painting party stuff I was doing. And um, and I don't know, I had maybe 12 students that came all the time and you know, three hours. It was, Kind of, kind of nice, and you know, private lessons too that I was doing with the, for them, and it was sort of an independent contractor. Well, the um, somebody at Jerry's, one of their bean counters, went into one of the Austin stores. As, as the story goes, is what I, this was how it was explained to me. Notice I'm pulling this toward me this way on the jeans, putting the lights here, and um, basically. Um, said that uh, um, uh, that that it, that the art classes were costing too much money that the store could do better just putting up kiosks of pens and whatever else, stuff else they sold and um, and they could make more money doing that and the, so in one fell swoop, no warning to any of the people taking the classes or any projects they might have been working on or anything like that. Jerry's uh, basically told the artists that, that, that with less than a week's notice that they were done. They were no longer doing art classes and kind of left all these other people that were kind of, I think, in the lurch, right? And um, gosh. I'm and I did, didn't talk about it for a lot of years. You know, I haven't talked about it for a lot of years, but it really... You know, I was lucky enough. Our store was making a profit. Our students bought a lot of stuff. And, um, and so I got to stay, sort of. I stayed a little bit. But um, uh, the upshot of it was is that, um, a bit, you know, that was the end of it. But all these people that had been working there, the different stores, they have a lot of them, these, these artists suddenly found themselves um, without without any kind of income. That was just the end of it. And, uh, you know what I mean? They didn't say, look, um, you know, in two months' time, we're going to stop this. And therefore, you know, you might want to, you know, come up with plan B. They just stopped it. Well, gosh, you guys. Um, I think that was very nice myself and um and it was and my students were mad i'll tell you what they were upset and uh but there was nothing in, that could be done yeah this is how it happened so i ended up staying longer than most and um and then we got you know started doing more of the painting party stuff and uh, then john and, and, and but i had been talking to to John and Mark, and so this, we started this other business, and it was I was lucky I had something else to do because I still had my fine art career where I was selling my paintings. But you know, painting can sit in a gallery for several months. You can't 
you can't count on that money coming in all the time. It's not a steady flow. It's not steady, right? So, um, anyhow, that was the story of how we got, ended up getting together. So we uh, we uh, go ahead and John was in Michigan, and you'll see some of our very early videos on on YouTube were uh, uh, the result of you know the of us. Doing it, you know, doing stuff. Collaboration that way. long distance. Kind of collaboration long distance, and then, um, um, uh, sadly and un very unexpectedly, John's wife Karen died, and a couple years later, he was still in Michigan. We were still doing it. Pretty soon after we first met, she she passed away, and um, uh. I invited John to come down to Houston and keep uh, keep working down here. So that is the upshot of our um, how I ended up down here. She was already up, here. Yeah, how we ended up here. So John's been down in Texas for about five years now. And um, I'm just barely suggesting uh, anything here. You see that? Just barely suggesting like a little triangle for an eye and just coming in here with the nose and because he, he's got a mustache. So this is sort of a cheat, but he's got a mustache. So I can, um, I think I can just put that in with a little bit of white paint like this. Oops. Well, I can still do that. And then I'll just take the green and put that back. No, it looks like Santa Claus. Yeah, well, it's all right. So there's the, um, so, all right. So it does, again, when you're doing people like this, when this part was, it doesn't have to be a portrait, you guys. You can just, you've got some, you've got a little wiggle room. Leeway, as it were. Yeah, to, to just. Um, you're capturing a moment in time when you're out. Yeah, wandering just, the forest, looking for and, the next you know, what great could painting. You, what could you do that would be interesting? And um, you know, just, just something like that. But that's we're saying that that happened. And then I put the straps on and stuff. That'll make it more like a backpack. And then I want to put this um, this pole, these poles down. But I want to make sure I have all the all the um, all the background, everything. Perfect. All the background and everything I want first before I do that. But you see how we just kind of kept this uh, back down. And have a, this this up here, and um, which is I think kind of neat. You guys know when you dry brush, you put the paint on the brush, and then you wipe it all off like that. It's a dry brush, and then you just drag it over something, and that gives it that sort of look like it's um, worn blue jeans, worn denim. Okay. And the same thing here with that. We're just that weathered look. And just get that a little bit lighter right there. And um, if you get too much, you can just put put a little dark blue back. Okay. There we go. There was a little extra paint on my brush that wasn't that didn't quite do it. There you go with that. So. Uh, uh, there we go. So something again. You don't need a lot of detail. You've got um, you've got your backpack. Now I wanted to do a purple back. I wanted to have more purple in my backpack than I had it. So I think that was the question. And then John, it was just easier for John. I mean, I have a big six bedroom house in um, in Texas and. Uh, George, George and I were divorced, and um, bring this down a little bit here. This backpack, there we go. Let's just bring it down and then make that darker. Um, so, I mean, I, you know, when he first came down, he got a lot of room. You can just bring all your stuff, and we get, we have a big place where we can film, and it should be good. And it was. Okay, so now I'm going to go back and um, for a minute and go back to my painting. Um, 
here. I want to go back to my painting and now finish the painting. Okay, so I feel like I've got the people in pretty good. I can come back and do a little more, but I'll finish the painting. You'll be putting the poles in last. Yeah, like for instance, I just definitely will put the, you know. Um, and make sure that. everything else is done because those, those are skinny poles. You don't want to have to paint around them. Yeah, I'm just going to suggest that maybe there's a, you know what? I don't like that because there was too much water on the brush. I'll tell you what, when you rinse the brush, if you don't really almost wring it out. You, you, That's such you, a strange word, wring it out. Yeah, it is a strange word, isn't it? I want so. some brighter reds here. What have I got here? Got a bright red. I don't have every color out that these guys make, but I do want a brighter red. Well, I don't think you need them all. I don't think I've got some, but I just wanted something a little brighter here because I want to put a little bit of a some red straps here. Candy says, if I have one question to ask, it would have to be, what do you do on those days you just are not in the mood to paint? Do you do packs? Do you work on a new website, et cetera, et cetera? What do you do? Some days I just can't get motivated to paint, so I wonder what in the world you guys do when that hits you. Um, you know what? We don't have that luxury. <laughs> This is art. This is, you know, we don't work, we don't eat, friends. <laughs> so that's how it is, right? We don't, we don't work, we don't eat. We don't we do not have the luxury of um of of that scenario. I don't think it comes up very often that we're not in the mood to paint. Yeah, and that, and I spend yeah, you know, you know, which is we're always creating, I, you know, if you're not actually physically painting, we are designing them up on the computer and getting ready to do it. Absolutely. And we'll do a marathon of them. You know, we get them all designed up and we'll do two or three. Absolutely. Right together. So what do we do? Yeah, she'll do the packs. Packs will get done every day. Regardless if we're on vacation, travel, it doesn't matter what's going on. Packs are always done. That's the personal art coaching. Packs stands for personal art coaching. And, That's what it stands and a for. video pack is where I actually do it, make a small video. Some You don't always get a video, but a video pack is where we do small videos. Of um, to help illustrate, to illustrate, you know, my suggestions. Boy, that's the you can't do enough of this this orange, can you? Just um. <laughs> well, I'm thinking you can. Well, maybe, but I'm telling you what, it just let's put something light back in here like that. I want to just suggest trees, and uh, still keep the still keep the feeling of my vignette which is um, something darker down in here. I'm going to suggest some leaves across the road. And we've got to put all that in. This is sort of fun. I, we're all just sort of chatting here anyway, right? That's you what guys, we're doing. That's what we're, we're chatting. We're just chatting here about um, how all this goes. So basically, Candy, we don't have days like that. We don't have days like that. Sometimes, you know, um, you know, we have to take some time out to maybe clean the house, or we don't have a cleaning lady or anything. They come in and a lot of my, most of my friends have somebody that comes in and at this age and cleans their house for them. That's us. We're the cleaning crew too. So occasionally we have to say, well, we should paint, but you know what? We really got to vacuum and clean up. And of course, um, and John does all the cooking. A lot of people don't know that. John's a wonderful cook. And um, his first uh, wife was a, Karen was a beautiful cook. And, um, and, but she was pretty much, um, uh, Possessive of the kitchen, but you say Oh, so? yeah. I, only way I figured out how to cook was I, I, I'm i kind of a neat freak. I would go in there and start cleaning up and moving things around, and I got yelled at for doing that. But while I was in there, I was absorbing the energy of her and just observing what she's doing. Yeah, yeah, because um, uh, exactly so. And um, so I learned by osmosis. Exactly so. Because I, I did not cook. I was not to cook in the family. And John, you know, and I did most of the cooking all the years I've been married, twice and all those years. 
Uh, no, well, that's actually, that, that's not true. George used to do a lot of cooking, but the problem when George cooked was that he made this huge mess. He always waited till the, 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 somebody had come to clean the house, and then he it makes spaghetti and splatter it everywhere. It's just so annoying. You know, there's just, anyway, he would do that. But the, uh, 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 so when John said, I want to cook, I'm going, really? Seriously? You really, you want to cook? Oh, huh? awesome. <laughs> I won the lottery. This man wants to cook. Yay for me. Lucky me. You guys know what I'm talking about, too, a lot of you. Yes and yes. Now, see these little strokes, little, little strokes are what kind of what make it. All the little leaves here, and they're just kind of layered on top they of each other. They just fall into the ground. And they're flat, right? If one was falling, it would go vertical. So you want to, I don't if they're kind of attached to the tree, then they're still doing this. But so you're starting to, it's, it's coming together, isn't it? It's good, getting kind of cute here, right? I think let's take a little of that green color, which I really like. Kind of, you know, this is the color. This is the one. This is in the Salvador kit. This is uh, 342 is one of my favorites. The Green. Azo yellow greenish. Oh yeah, that's one of my favorite. Like that yellow. No, that's not the one. Where is it then? I lied. <laughs> Forget that one. It. I lied. It's not it. Uh I used to have a kitten that when I was going to school, this one was green. Okay, yeah, what is that one? Hold this it up so I can see it. Uh three five five. It's sort what of light green. And I put a little bit of yellow oxide with it. Know kind of mixed it together. It's a kind of a very light green. Um just do a few little dabs of that here. Little dab will do you. Use more Real only if you dare. Yeah. But watch out. Guys will gals will all pursue you. Remember that one? You're going, what is she going on about? That was used to be an ad. They those were called jingles in the old days. They're called jingles, and they figured out they could make a little poem. You'd remember it, you'd remember their product because you couldn't stop saying it. It was, I think they outlawed it as being illegal, didn't they? Because it made people crazy. <laughs> I think that, um, uh, because people really did, you know. You certainly don't hear jingles anymore. No. But then look at what we're advertising now. Yeah, they do. Yeah, Back want... in my day, Viagra would not have been, been, a, been a topic for discussion, yet alone advertised on television. <laughs> right? And we're doing <laughs> drugs and. You know, par pharmaceuticals. Yeah, pharmaceuticals, and then and I just can't see a jingle going with that. No, no, really, honestly, honestly, can you? I just can't do it. Remember, the brighter colors are in front. So if you're going to do any bright colors, they would be in front. You know, you might have might have some. You don't need too many, but you might have a few bright colors. We'll tone those back in a bit. But we're starting to bring your eye forward here like that and suggest that there's a um, maybe a little tree or something. I'm having fun. I don't know how long this is, is John. How long have we been on here this with our little uh, premiere? No, just about an hour and a half. Not too long at all. Okay. I wasn't sure what there it goes. See, so see if you put a few little details in like that where you're suggesting you know, little branches. Um, what happens is, is that you've got, it gives you this certain, it gives you more of that vignette feel. Okay. You don't have to do a lot of that, but it's it, it doesn't hurt, right? You might want to suggest maybe there's a tree here somewhere. I think I should change brushes. That's a ruby satin silver, and it's really not, it, it doesn't have a strong enough edge for this. A brush like this, the Bristol on has the sharper edge if you need a, you know, a thin edge for something. Just you need it slightly damp and not wet. That's the trick. People always get too much water on the brush, and then they wonder what happens. You need 
slightly damp is all so that your paint wants to flow. Look at this. I'm going to put the tree in here like that and suggest another tree back over here and then we'll do the vignette and um, let's make that a little darker. This is There we go. And uh, yeah, I want some darker shadows along here. Let's just get some darker one of these little leaves here. Um, okay, so uh, let's see a little bit of white here. Let's see from here like this. We want to suggest the trail still coming this way. Everything's kind of going across. And it's almost a almost like a light purple. Um, that's good, right? Yes and yes. Okay, let's try some white on the brush. Did not want that color. All right. You can just bring that out lighter. As we sit here and talk, it's sort of fun, right? So um, anyway, um, one of the things that was so nice about uh, you know, John coming down to Texas and us discovering that we were very, uh, made, we actually made a very com compatible couple is that, um, put a little bit of hair right there over the shoulder. And I want this to be lighter. Um, see, we got something lighter here, just sort of a light yellow on that. There you go. Um, is that um, uh, we both found we like the same things, like traveling and um, uh, you know, we just hadn't had a chance uh, in recent years to do that. And, you know, so we, we like to travel and do so, so many of the same things, which makes a big difference. Yes and yes? Very compatible. Yeah, I'd say that that's true. A little highlight on the arm there. And then let's see, let's just tone that back a little bit. That little bit of purple is kind of nice on the road, just on, almost a white purple. Um, just a little bit. It's still light. It's very light, but it has just a slight, like a purple gray tint to it. Like a little shadow. A shadow color. Yeah, and then I could probably, uh, if it was, you know, if this were really me, there'd be Crocs. It wouldn't be. <laughs> I'd be wearing Crocs, but that's all right. Um, um, all right, I think now is the time to put the poles in, so I'm going to give it a good dry before I do. And I want to come up here a little bit with the, I'm going to make some of this lighter up here. Cool. All right, I'm going to dry it, and then I'm going to put the poles in. You guys, I don't think I can look at another commercial about how to unstop the toilet, or um, maybe you two can learn to draw that, you know, we... We have to have those in our video in order to kind of cover some costs, but I thought it would be fun as long as we were doing it to put a commercial in for ourselves. So here's the, here's the commercial from me to you. 
I want you to have a wonderful day. I want you to be the artist you can be. I want you to get up in the morning and say, today's the day I'm going to be happier than I was yesterday. This is my commercial and wishing you the bestest, happiest day of your life. And art hugs from John and I. Okay, so how, all right, so the easiest way to put those poles in is to use tape. Really? I guess we could do it. You could do, you could use, a, you can use a, lines. one of those little credit card things too. Just do something like this too, because you're not talking about something very long here. That's what I was thinking. So probably could do that, you know. Uh, okay. And a new clean soft cloth here. And sure, I'm going to just do sort of a brush reddish brown, I think, for this. Reddish brown, pole. really? Yeah, and it's going to go right there. So I'm going to just okay. It looks like a pole. Looks like then you gotta wipe the card off. Do you remember to do that, right? You're gonna say this is coming this way. I think let's pull a little darker. Yeah, you know, I just put a little thing like that over the wrist. And uh, a little strap so the pole doesn't get away from you. Well, in my case, I'd have to have that, or it, it certainly would. <laughs> it would uh, disappear. Yeah, that certainly would, like that. And just, you know, I want a little bit of red on this one. Okay, flatten out your paint when you got to do that. Just flatten it out. So that the you know, and then I can just use the this um, paint. Just, whoops. There we go. So it doesn't look too much like that, but they're kind of kind of nice like that. And then there we go. A little. A little bit of a handle right up there like that and let me just do the light here and so much of this is acrylic stripe darker so you know you're just talking about you know where you can put stuff i want to just do a little bit of i got to go back to my couple now to my original couple and blow this up so I can see what I'm painting. And um, so it's, it's sort of interesting that in the, the I'm gonna make that a little bit darker right there and here. Oh, it goes a little bit wider. These poles, they taper down. They're not just straight, they taper. So I think that's important. And then just, just come down here like that. All right, so we've got the, we've got the poles, got the, um, Put a few little wrinkles in the pants. Um, I just got a little bit of something darker under here, under the where this elbow is. Come down like that, make that a little bit darker. And uh, let's do this with the, the strap, didn't show up as well as I would have liked. So we're going to. Do a little bit of a darker line like that. Okay, that's good. And uh, something darker right there. And uh, now, also I have to do now that we've done that, right, is to just, so for instance, the top of this backpack doesn't read as well as I'd like. So mm -hmm. let's think about that. It's just when I say it, you, I can't really decide what the top of this backpack is. To um, 
something. Maybe I just need something. Maybe I'll, I'll just do that. Maybe I'll take some um, here. Get some cad red. This is um, cadmium morn job because I just the other one was kind of gone here. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna just there we go. Oh, there we go. Good. Yes. And um, there's a little bit of that color up here on the top. Again, can't say enough about colors. Okay. And I want a little bit of um, uh, color, really, when I'm talking about fall. Um, see, where else do I want to put something? I'm looking at this going, I want some, well, some of these, break up these leaves here like that. Let's take a little bit of this. Like that. Let's just do a little bit, something like that. The same thing here. I want to come across. I mean, here's this tree. Let's just. That's the one place where you can get really brightest with fall colors. And you know, when you're painting trees, you can go in front of a tree in a couple places and indicate that there's stuff happening. And even be a little bit here with this tree. Um, but if you get a blob of paint on you guys, got to wipe it off, right? You know that, right? I know so this, that. This just, and John knows that, you know? Absolutely. One of the things I'm hoping this month that we can do is that John can do a little painting himself. One of the things that John has wanted to do and hasn't been able to uh, is because he's been so busy um, with the new web website that um and getting everybody transferred over so you know, just now we want to just sort of play with the vignette thing here uh, again i want it to just be darker down in here darker up in here and just make everything kind of out of focus and again i want the feeling that you're sort of peeking into this uh scene into the little world into this little world of um of, of forest hiking yes so that's that, and you can you can do a vignette with a lot of things. You just don't want to. Oh, you just want to make it more out of focus. So it's not like a hard line, like you you put an oval mat on it. We're not trying to do that. You you want to have it to be more um, random than that. Yes. There's some cad yellow here. See how we're just sort of bringing this up to the foreground here, like that. Um, again, you can't vary the brush size too. Do you want to vary that? That's one advantage of the angle brushes. You can go from very, very so small to very to, big. Yeah, depending on how, how hard you push, you can go from, yeah, from large to, to, to very small. And you want to, I, I, I see some people doing the wood scene the woodland scene here, and I'll see them do it, but they're not. Um, uh, uh, varying the size, it's the same. And the cl closer you are, you know, you have more detail than the farther you were away. Yes and yes. So you can have some colors. Let's see. We're going to come back over here and see the colors I came up with, because I don't want to keep them. Um, yeah, you can have have some colors and oranges and stuff. And all of that's good, right? But remember, the sharper the contrast, uh, let's see, I'm putting a little red, and there's certainly red leaves and these, you know, certainly some red leaves. And don't be afraid to do that. Uh, to kind of bring your picture around here like that. Looking. Just don't put red over wet green. Yes? And, and you're going to be okay. And I think I want a little bit of a shadow probably under her feet because you don't really see John's John's shoes in the picture in the are kind of they're gone. They're gone. You just and he wears these green hiking boots anyway, and you just don't see them, right? They're in front here. They just disappear. They just kind of disappear here with the 
the shirt of the hiking boots here, but they're his pants are always too long coming up his shoes anyway. So there, there's that. Now, do we think that this is covered up enough in here like that? Should we bring some of this up here? To kind of make that backpack stand out. Again, keep going back to my wherever there's a light, there's a dark thing, right? And um, you can break it up and then still do a lighter yellow. I want to show you too, some of the things one of the things that John and people say, what do you guys work on? One of the things we work on all the time is coming up with new paintings for you to do, new ways for you to do them. Again, what happened here? That's not showing up. What could I put there? We have a green in the back. The stripe kind of helped. Did the stripe help a little bit? It didn't help a little bit. Maybe I can say that the stripe came around here like this. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, I guess it doesn't have to say, maybe some light yellow, what do you think? Right there, huh? There we go, something up here like that. There, there it goes, that brought it forward again, yeah? Yeah, it's better. And then the same thing with over here too, it's something a little brighter here. Okay. So now, now, Let's bring some of these other trees. Let's take some of these leaves here like this. Come down in front. We've got some back ones. It's just a, maybe a, uh, a branch that might be coming down. A branch with a few little leaves. Mm -hmm. And by doing that, I'm okay. you're talking about how to bring certain things forward. And what the vignette is doing is it's sort of we're saying that the um That these, you know, maybe something's coming down from the top like that. There, you want it this very tiny. You're going to have that, right? And I had a lot of that was with the light that had white in it. So I can just, if I got these too dark, I can tap over them like that. But there's our leaves. Break up the sky a bit. And gosh, you guys, I think. Um, I'm going to let that dry for a second. I want to take a moment to go back out, John. I want to show you guys some stuff we've got going before we finish off this. Probably the big one. In our Academy of Fine Art and Acrylic Painting, one of the things you'll get that you don't so much get in our YouTube videos are pretty fast and stuff. But the step-by-step -step instruction really is in our Academy. And um, one of my favorite ones that we released last week was, was called Wash Day. And in this painting of uh, these three gals, um, a lot of hours in this video, and I show you how to take a black and white photo, just an old-timey photo, and how to transfer the, uh, the drawing on to it, and how to create color, how to come up with a color palette and create it. And I love this one. I think it's so different and very nostalgic. Uh, for a, a lot of our uh, our viewers, because perhaps you have a grandparent or somebody you knew that wasn't that long ago, and or even you know, yourself, or even ourselves at camp, we used to do washing some stuff by <laughs> by hand too. So there you go. That's called Wash Day, and again, acrylic painting with Ginger Cook uh, dot com is the website, and that would be a red or purple a membership where you get personal art coaching and you get these very nice detailed. Paintings. Now, if you just wanted to paint this and just say, you know, I don't do membership or whatever, of course you can get it as a standalone. Standalone lesson. A lesson, though it's less expensive to just sign up for a membership for a month and paint it than it would be to buy it. But you can buy it. Because you have personal art coaching with a membership. You don't get that with a downloadable. Yeah. So there, there's that. Now, um, unless you're already a member. We also have member. something called the Wave and Water Masterclass. And something that just was released, and I don't think we we did enough uh, shouting about it, but here it is. This is a Norway 
and these fjords of Norway, the, uh, the waterfall, the rushing, cascading water. This is, a, we have a wave and water class. We teach you not just how to paint oceans, but anything with water in it. Again, um, uh, knowing landscapes, this is helpful to know. And you, you'll notice these colors in, over in here are similar to what we did today, yes? Similar colors that we use. That's called fjords of Norway. And, and that one's available for the blue and purple members. Blue and purple members. And then we have, um, there, uh, this week in our academy, this is a, a much, this is like a two cookie lesson, I think. Was it or two or three? A meeting in difficulty, one being very beginner, is that this is a palette knife painting. And what's so cool about this picture is we show you how to take a photograph that doesn't really, it's just a photograph of some barns and how to turn it into a painting because of how our old masters did and how to, again, palette knife painting. Really, really nice, lots of layers. Um, for those of you that are loving country barns, we think that's really cool. And then um, the week after that, we've got some cats and we'll show you that too. But um, people have asked me all the time, time about golden opens. And here's our two cats. One was painted 100% with golden open paint and one was not. The one in our academy will be the regular ones. And if you want just the video on golden opens, that will be available for purchase. As you can see, this cat was painted just slightly differently each time. And the gold, you know, what uh, is there a difference? I mean, I when Golden Opens first came out, I bought a whole set of them and I don't use them very much. And though I'll find, I will use the Golden Open medium to get the effect with regular acrylics. But anyway, we have both of these cats and I think that they're adorable. So. Very fluffy. That, that, there you go. So the, let's just take a good look at our uh, picture now. Painting. Uh, our painting of uh, what we've got going here. I think we could use a few more little brush strokes um, for the leaves. Uh, I'm just using a, you know, sometimes you just want to do that. Just some smaller ones like this. Just, just because you can, right? Let's break that up a bit like that. And um, I am tempted to want, I really wanted to put some birds in it, but I didn't, you guys. I did not put any bird, birdies in it. You put a bird in, calls for a tractor. And so you, you can kind of see, this was our general idea of what we wanted to paint. And I think we got that. I think we have that. Now, You, if you got, um, if you got uh, too much, uh, you can take a little bit of zinc white. Remember, sometimes I told you, it's, sometimes you want the sky to be a little bit lighter. Zinc white is very transparent. You can take a little bit of zinc white, come down here like this and just maybe lighten the sky a bit. Just where you want something lit in the back to give, give, give everybody somewhere to go. You know, break that up and break that sky up right there. There you go. So that's your that's the trick with using um and even on the edge here my vignette I can put a little on the edge and just sort of soften that up like that. But don't be afraid to do that. And I think I still want some white paint here, just on the top here. I'm I'm getting into white paint, but it has a little color on it. If I can find a piece that doesn't. <laughs> There you go. It's a little bit more white here on the top of the head. And uh, I want to make sure I've got some hair going this way. Uh, over the shoulder. And uh, let's see, am I going to do this? Just it could be just there. All right. And, and I think just on the top here, John's silvery hair is nice white silver hair. Let's bring that down again. Remember, this is very, you want two tone hair, kind of gray, kind of light gray, and then um, uh, two tone. And I have a little blonde in my hair still, so I have a little of that color in there too, kind of that light yellow color. Okay. So, that, my dear friends, I feel like we have gotten, I think we've we, captured, we, the we moment. Have captured the moment, right, of the vignette. 
and uh, she showed how it could be. Now, the only thing is that it's not, we, I didn't really uh, finish that right there. This should be darker here. You know what I mean? Because that, that should be a little bit more even than I made it. So let's just do that and maybe this, put a little of this green going this way. I'm going to fudge that out a little bit. All these softer. technical terms. Do you like that? Do you like that? I think fuzz out is 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 an absolute appropriate term here. Just fuzz out and smudging. Fuzz out and smudging, and I feel like that one got to be. Here you go. Let's just do a little darker in the corner. Like I say I always like to darken the corners. It forces, it causes the eye to want to go into the center, right like that. So that just focuses you in toward the. The, the center of this and um let's see i would do one little thing because you know i didn't really give you a nose so i put my glasses on to see it but there there would be a little nose sticking out here like that and i do it a with white well here's the thing that has been sitting in water and there's too much water in the brush you hear you me say that. that all the time but it's just you, your brush has been sitting in water, and then you try to paint with it. Nothing is going to happen. So just a little tiny bit of a nose, not much. Wait, that's it's not even covering, is it? I need to be a little bit more liquidy. There you go. Yeah, there you go. I can breathe finally. Just a, well, you know, it was a... Um, I don't really want it white. I want it skin tone, but there you go. Just you need a little bit of a nose right there. As I, again, this was a perfect one because you didn't you didn't have any of that. You just had the um, uh, the top of, of of the you know you just didn't have any of that. Here's our purple. Okay, and I want to do something a little dark darker right here because. Um, then the arm shows up. Remember I told you I'd put a little light on the arm too? Because in my, there you go, it's just a little light right here on the arm, and on the hand. There you go. Oh, perfect. Yes. And it kind of shows where the hands are gripping the poles. And, uh, and so I'd say we were pretty good there, right? And um, let's put a few little leaves down here with it at the bottom. There we go. And I'm going to do one more. Like, oh, she never stops with this one. One more. Look one more. There's always one more. Look at that. Just brighten that up again one more time on that one shirt. One more. Well, yes, John, because. Because <laughs> there's one more. Because there's one more. And I guess we could keep playing with this for a little bit, but you get the idea. So what you want to do, bet you can paint us. We'll have the traceables up on our website uh, for, uh, for those of you. We want to thank everybody who's been a basic supporter. Just you know, it you would know, appreciate that you guys tonight who have contributed to our Karen Little Scholarship Fund. Very much, thank you very much for that. But also for those of you, our basic supporters who just, you know, it's available for the traceables and you just because you love us. And we thank you very much for that. And we thank all our Academy members and um, we're, uh, we're doing personal art coaching. And um, that's not writing, let's get, well, it might. I got to sign this here. So while I'm getting ready to sign this, people always ask, "Is there a particular place where you should sign something?" And I would say um, it depends on the painting. For instance, because it's going to bring your eye over there. I'm going to try it right here. There we go. I think that a little bit of white. Could have signed it over here too by the feet. So what do you think, John? Feet here. Oh, where you feet. got it. Right where I got it. Okay. Yep. Kind of balances it out a little yep. bit. You'd be competing with the feet. And, and next week I will answer why, because I why I do the red slash, because I'm sure somebody's asked that. Yes? Always. So why we do the red slash. We'll tell you guys that story again too. And uh it's all good, right? All good. Hey, if you haven't subscribed, take a moment, hit that old subscribe button. Give the thumbs up and hit that bell. That yeah. way you'll be notified whenever we go live or post anything of interest.
Yeah, so here we are. And um, uh, we've got uh, hikers in the woods. Hikers in the woods. That's what we're calling it. Maybe. <laughs> hikers in the fall. Hikers that fell. Hikers in the hikers fall. that fell in the fall. No, no, it's falling. We have sticks. <laughs> there are no falling here. I guess there was another stick right here. I had a stick here. You didn't see it. I had a stick here. Do you want that stick? I have a stick right here. You need two poles. You are two polar. Look at that one. See, you could do it without the credit card thing. That's thingy. true. That's true. There's my other stick. So there. This is a Bristol on uh, number one, silver. It's uh, not round. a filbert. It it's a, I said it's silver, a ruby satin silver, oh. Bristol on <laughs> round. Like I didn't say filbert. So it's not like you said a filbert. No, I did not say that. Do you think they make a baby filbert like that? I don't think it would even work. No, anyway, yeah. it's a round. There it's you go. So there's a, there's a meeting of the minds right there. Look at yeah. that. Close. That's what we do, meet with the minds. Yeah, that's it. It's the meaning of the minds right here. This is... There you go. Happy days are here again, you guys. Camping in the woods. I love it. I think this is so fun. What a great thing to do. Just take one painting and, you know, one one reference photo and then stick some people in it. There you so go. So who are your people? And, um, and for those of you who are doing personal art coaching, if you're not sure about your people, send them to me first, and I'll give you a heads up on whether they'll work. How's that? Yeah, I would do it that way for sure. Bye, you guys. Thanks for being part of our premiere. And thumbs up and love you guys. And see you next Monday for another fabulous curly painting with Ginger Cook. Bye, all. Bye. Ginger Cook, the queen of color, with a blazing brush at the speed of light, and a blank canvas, and a hearty yes and yes. The queen of color, Ginger Cook, and her sidekick, John Little, teach you to paint with acrylics.